Welcome back to another episode of DAS with your boy Sean Mack and today we're going to be discussing one of my favorite wrestling characters of all time. Just to let you in on a little secret, I was a kid when this person actually fought and when he would walk out I would hide behind the sofa because he was so intimidating that he scared me. I couldn't watch it until he got into the ring and my mother assured me that it wasn't real. In my opinion, he had the best persona ever in wrestling. We're talking about the late great James Arthur Harris, better known as Kamala, the Ugandan giant. So remember, if you like today's content, make sure you share, like, and subscribe to the video. So let's go. Harris made his wrestling debut in 1978 under the ring name Sugar Bear Harris and spent most of his early career in the southern United States also using the ring name Ugly Bear Harris and Big Jim Harris. His first manager was Percy Pringle. He won his first championship in NWA Tri-State in 1979 teaming with Oki Shakina to win the NWA Tri-State Tag Team Championship. In 1980, Harris joined Southeastern Championship Wrestling as Bad News Harris, winning the NWA Southeastern Heavyweight Championship in 1980. In 1981, Harris traveled to Europe to get his name out there more. Following a stint in Germany, he traveled to the United Kingdom, where he wrestled for joint promotions as the Mississippi Mauler, a character with some similarities to the future Kamala character he portrayed. In June of 1981, he competed in a tournament for the vacant WWA World Heavyweight Championship, losing to Wayne Bridges in the finals in Wembley Arena in London. Mr. Harris returned to the United States in 1982 after sustaining a broken ankle while visiting his friend the Dream Machine at the Mid-South Coliseum in nearby Memphis, Tennessee to borrow ring attire. Harris met Continental Wrestling Association promoter Jerry Lawler who offered him a job. Harris, Lawler, and Jerry Jarrett developed a new character for Harris, Camila, later adjusted to Kamala, drawing upon ideas for a character originally developed for Harris by the great Mephisto. The character was a vicious Ugandan headhunter with face and body paint copied from a Frank Frenzetta painting. His backstory that he was a former bodyguard of deposed president of Uganda, Idi Amin, who had been discovered by J.J. Dillon during an excursion in Africa. A promotional commercial aired on WMC TV featuring a spear wielding Kamala seemingly emerging from a steamy African jungle. The commercial was actually filmed on Jared's farm in Hendersonville, Tennessee, with the steam effects created using dry ice. To establish Kamala as a monstrous character, Jared instructed him to wrestle in a brawling style with chops and biting. Harris wore robes and refused to speak English while in public in Memphis. Kamala made his debut in the CWA in May of 1982 with Dylan as his manager, losing to Lawler by disqualification in a match that sold out the Mid-South Coliseum. In June, he defeated Lawler for the AWA Southern Heavyweight Championship, which was held until August that year. Towards the end of the year, he feuded with the imposer Kamala too. In late 1982, Kamala began wrestling for Bill Watts' Mid-South Wrestling Promotions. He was managed by Skandar Akbar and Friday, originally portrayed by Buddy Wayne and then by Frank Dalton, forming part of Akbar's villainous Devastation Incorporated stable. In April of 1983, he wrestled Andre the Giant in a highly promoted bout at the Louisiana Superdome. Also in 1983, he faced the Junkyard Dog in a series of, quote, battles of the monsters in quote matches. In 1984, at the insistence of Andre the Giant, Kamala debuted in the World Wrestling Federation, the WWF, in July of that year. He was managed by Freddie Blasey and a mass handler in safari clothing known as Friday, played first by Frank Dalton then by Steve Lombardi. In a segment that wouldn't be forgotten by fans everywhere, on the television program Tuesday Night Titans, Kamala seemingly devoured a live chicken with a cutaway shot of feathers flying out of his mouth 
shown to create the illusion. After defeating a series of opponents including B. Brian Blair, Salvatore Beloma, and Chief J. Strongbow in August of 1984, Kamala challenged Hulk Hogan for the WWF World Heavyweight Championship, wrestling him to a double countout. In October of 1984, he began a series of matches against Andre the Giant, among them a steel cage match, which he lost after Andre twice sat on his chest. Kamala's final appearance was in a battle royale in November of 1984. But like every great wrestling persona does, Kamala returned to the WWF in July of 1986, now managed by the Wizard and the Mass Handler Kim Chi. From November 1986 to February 1987, Kamala faced Hulk Hogan in a series of matches for the WWF World Heavyweight Championship, marking the pinnacle of his career. The run of matches included two bouts in Madison Square Garden that aired on WWF on MSG Network. In February of 1987, Kamala formed a tag team with the Wild Samoan, Silka. In the same month, he began a feud with Jake Roberts, during which Roberts reportedly exploited Kamala's fear of snakes. Kamala won this feud when he defeated Roberts at the 11th edition of Saturday Night's Main Event with the help of the Honky Tonk Man. In April of 1987, the Wizard sold Kamala's managerial contract to Mr. Fuji. Mr. Harris was scheduled to once again face off against the World Heavyweight Champion Hulk Hogan at the Saturday night's main event 12, but he abruptly left the WWF once more in September of 1987 over frustrations about his pay. But once again, Mr. Harris came back. Kamala returned to the WWF on May 9th of 1992 with Lombardi reprising the Kim Chi character as Harvey Whippleman acting as his manager. In June of 1992, he unsuccessfully challenged Randy Savage for the WWF World Heavyweight Championship. Throughout mid-1992, he wrestled primarily in house shows with his regular opponents including The Undertaker, Bret Hart, The Texas Tornado, and The Ultimate Warrior. Kamala lost to The Undertaker by disqualification at SummerSlam in August of 1992. Kamala later claimed that he was paid $13,000 for the bout, while The Undertaker was paid $500,000. Professional wrestler journalist Dave Metzer questioned the claim, saying, quote, I'm not saying he's lying, but it's hard to believe. For there to be such a big disparity wouldn't make any sense, end quote. In November of 1992, Kamala lost to The Undertaker at the Survivor Series in the first ever televised casket match. In January of 1993, Kim Chi and Whipple Man begin mistreating Kamala, leading to him to break away from them and align himself with Reverend Slick, turning face for the first time in his WWF career. Reverend Slick set out to humanize Kamala, leading to a series of skits in which he introduced him to activities such as 10-pin bowling. Kamala feuded with Kim Chi throughout early 1993. In March of 1993, he began a series of matches with Bam Bam Bigelow. The two were scheduled to face one another at WrestleMania 6, but the match was canceled. In May of 1993, Kamala lost a King of the Ring tournament qualifying match, VIA countout to Mr. Hughes. On the episode of WWF Wrestling Challenge, Mr. Harris went on to compete primarily at house shows until being released by the WWF that July. In December of 1993, Kamala was announced as a participant in the 1994 Royal Rumble match. During the bout, the announcers noted that Virgil, as an ultimate participant, had replaced him. From 1994 to 2007, Mr. Harris, better known as Kamala, went on to fight for multiple promoters and promotions. But his last wrestling match took place on August 15th of 2010 at the Juggalo Championship Wrestling, with the Weed Man defeating the Hater, Paulie and Vito Tomaselli in one match. On August 5th of 2020, Harris tested positive for COVID-19 during the COVID-19 pandemic in Mississippi. He was hospitalized. He likely contracted it from one of his numerous weekly visits to the dialysis center, said his wife. Due to COVID-19, he started to experience complications from his diabetes. He went into cardiac arrest on August 9th of 2020, dying later that afternoon at the age of 70. 
rest in peace, big dog. Oh boy, that brought back some great memories, some great childhood memories. That was beautiful. Uh, remember, if you like today's content, make sure you share, like, and subscribe to the video. Hit up that comment section. All my Kamala fans, all my Mid-South Wrestling fans, all my old school WWE, WWF fans, get in that comment section and let me know. Now, I'm not sure about today. I'm pretty sure today we couldn't have a character like that because of wokeism and everybody's a little sensitive and maybe it was a little bit too raw for back then, but that was my childhood and I loved it and I loved growing up with that character. But I'm going to leave you on this note in March of 2021, writing about this character. 411 Mania's Ryan Byers called the character problematic since it promoted all sorts of negative stereotypes of Africans and black people more generally. But praise Harris's performance since, quote, you believe he was what he portrayed. And more importantly, you believe that he was very dangerous, end quote. And on that note. I've been Sean Mack, and this is Death After Sports. James Harris, a.k.a. Kamala. Peace.